I mean, I burned through money too. I have. Why aren't you saving money? I'm not. I'll never save money. Why not? Money comes and goes. You got to get rid of it. Don't ever keep money. That's my advice for everyone listening to this podcast. Get rid of your money when it comes in, because it comes no, back in. No, fucking this is waves. Mike Carano. No, my, that's get not. Rid of no, it. get rid no, of it. No, no. Take care of everyone you possibly can. Take care of you. I'm fine. Put your mask on first. Put your financial. You never mask know how long it's going to last, so spend it all while you got it. That's how I go about <laughs> oh, things. Rocky. I bought an eight hundred dollar bottle of bourbon yesterday. I tip a hundred bucks at pretty much every restaurant I go to now. Yeah, and if they address it and they're like, "You don't have to do that," I give them another hundred. Rocky. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crazy Money. This is your host Paul Allinger. I'm happy you're here. I'm thrilled to share a conversation with you this week with my buddy Rocky Dale Davis. Rocky is a young comedian who is on a tear in the comedy world. He's headlining all over the United States of America. After some rough starts and stops in his early twenties. Rocky's got a few years of experience and maturity under his belt. He's seen that the industry and COVID and global pandemics can take things away from him. And I think he's got a true appreciation for how far he's come in life. And he has come a long way. Rocky grew up in small town, Alabama, the son of a single mom. He was raised in a trailer park and had to work hard for everything he's ever gotten. So it's nice to see him finally getting a chance to experience a little bit of breathing room, financially speaking. That being said, as you'll hear in this conversation, Rocky is, uh, he's got some ideas around money that you'll hear make me cringe, make me want to grind my teeth and grab him by the neck. Except if I did that, he'd probably beat my ass because Rocky's a big dude, but he's got some great stories. He's got some amazing stories that he shares in his comedy. We've got some comedy clips in this episode, but he shares some insights into what it was like starting comedy in Alabama, what it was like being raised by an abusive white trash dad, his words, why he had to go to Mexico to get his teeth fixed recently, what it's like to get into fights at church, and most frustrating to me, why he wants to get rid of all his money whenever it comes in. Anyway, why I wanted to talk to him is because I think it's a really interesting contrast between me as a 52-year-old comedian who's a few years in and talking to him as a 28-year-old who's experiencing this first taste of the financial good life. And the contrast between our two perspectives is, is pronounced, I think you'd say. Rocky Del Davis is playing all over the country. He's been seen on Comedy Central on both This Week at the Comedy Cellar and Kevin Hart Presents. He's been on many other TV shows, and I know you'll find him playing at a club near you soon. A link to his website is in the show notes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rocky Dale Davis. Rocky Dale Davis, welcome to Crazy Money. I'm pumped, dude. First time guest, long time listener. Are you? Which episodes have you listened never to? Never listened to one. You've I've never listened to one? <laughs> I've seen your clips. Your clips are really good, but you have people on that I don't understand, dude. <laughs> like you have people on that she's like, she is a nuclear physicist investor, and it's like, I don't know what that is, dude. My dad was a nuclear physicist. Was he really? Yeah. That's hilarious. That is that is so funny. That your dad is a nuclear physicist, and then right now at my mom's house, my aunt is staying with us, and her pit bull just bit her hand and broke it, and she doesn't have the money to go to the doctor. It doesn't want to go to the doctor, and now her hand doesn't move anymore. I'm not sure what that has to do with nuclear physics. <laughs> it has to do with the different families. You're like, that dad's a nuclear physicist. I'm like, she's a truck driver. My aunt is. Yeah. Let's start there. Where are you from? I'm from Brookwood, Alabama. Brookwood, Alabama. Where is that? It's about a 45 minutes south of the start on. We've done the start on together. We so did about, a year yeah. ago, last December. Yeah. yeah. Oof, big time. They loved me at the start on, boy. Yeah. <laughs> They're like more dry jokes. You're not you're not acting arrogant enough on stage. Please. That pretend you're smarter than you already are. Oh man, that club gives away tickets and it just sometimes, you know, you'll have a fun show there and then most of the time you are just dealing with people that don't care. They are coming cuz they got like free tickets. Yeah. And so yeah. I wasn't selling any tickets. I mean, I think I sold like 100 that whole weekend. Yeah. So it was like one show that was pretty good. But the other ones, they're just, and then, then you're getting with my crowd, the way they give away tickets, they like ask what radio station you listen to. Uh-huh. So with mine, they just call the Hillbilly Radio Station. <laughs> and so then you're up there and you're telling, you know, joke, the one joke they loved about you was the fight about the carrots. They liked that joke a lot. The carrot joke. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. classic. Yeah. At the, the end, they would have been more of like, if you had a hitter, that would have been funnier than them. But <laughs> <laughs> now we don't joke about that. That's on the, crazy. Cut it, now we're cutting it. But I understand what you're saying. I do. Those crowds are the worst. If you can make that crowd laugh 
with jokes that aren't hack, yeah. you're doing something really, really good. Yeah, yeah. But when you're there and you live there, over time, you just build the hackiest sets. Okay, so Birmingham, Alabama is yeah. where the Stardome is. And you're 45 minutes from there? 45 Brookwood, minutes. Brookwood, south. Yeah. You described Brookwood in a recent Instagram post, I thought vividly, with the trifecta of dollar stores that are there. So I just got, this was today, I just went back to Alabama coming to Atlanta, and I stopped, and I saw, so we always had a Dollar General. We we had a Piggly Wiggly back in the day, and the Piggly Wiggly was like the spot, you know, it was great. They closed down like 15 years ago, then we got the Dollar General. The Dollar General has been our home, our safe place. Mm -hmm. And then now, like maybe a half a mile down the road, we have a dollar tree and a family dollar that are being put in the same building. So I guess they must have got owned or operated. So now we will literally have a dollar tree, a family dollar, and a dollar general. And it is just, I'm like, we did it, guys. The prophecy is now true. You there know? you go. I think I said in the post that the trees are going to start to whisper Leonard Skinner. The river is going to run cold with Natty Light. And the heavens will split. And uh, Del Earnhardt Sr. will come down and do a lap around town. So small southern town. What was your home life like growing up? My mom was great. My dad was not a good person. He was a very, very bad person, I guess, is the way to describe it. It was a typical, like, white trash, you know, <laughs> abusive dad. And, you know, it's funny because it, I'm not going to say it was a hard childhood at all. Like, my mom mm-hmm. was great. And my dad was just a bad person. And so we bounced around. We, my mom left when we were 10, but we left with her. And we bounced around from, like, trailer park to trailer park in mm-hmm. Brookwood. And that was the first time I got to really, like, experience a trailer park life, which is, you know, it's a valuable. You learn. You learn. What do you learn in a trailer park? So the guy to the right of us, who he still watch us from time to time, was a, uh, we found out, registered sex offender. And then two houses down from that, we had a, a meth lab blow up. The house was actually Get out a meth of here. lab. So what I got? You can look it up. Two trailers down from two trailers. Meth yeah. lab. But the guy beside us was selling weed. That's the first place I've ever seen cocaine. I remember I was like shocked. I was the like, weed dealer is like, he's the good man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, the, he's the one who brings ever cookies for everybody. <laughs> he's always got Doritos. But you and, know, you talk about that, you know, or whatever. And the worst thing about my, my childhood was getting picked on in middle school. But why'd like, you get picked on? The way I talk now. So I would talk to you, I'd make fun of you. Right. But then they would just they would fight you. So then like they would just beat you up. Didn't everybody talk like that in Brookwood? Not like making fun of people. Like I was funny, but when the mm-hmm. guy that's not popular is the funny dude, no one likes it. You have to be like Tyler with the wavy hair. I came from the Justin Bieber era, so everybody had the wavy <laughs> hair. And my hair never grew like that. I was a short little fat kid. And You were short and fat? Yeah. I was You're I was, tall and strapping now. It was like eleventh grade summer that I got tall. I see people in my hometown now. Because, you know, they're just, they're like eight kids in, you know, they're mm-hmm. 28 now. They're, they got <laughs> grandkids and stuff. Yeah. And they see me and I'm just like, what's up, boy? You peaked in high school. I just got started, dog. Yeah. How old are you now, by the way? I'm 28. 28. Yeah. So 10 years out. Yeah. Have you gone to your 10 year reunion yet? I'm not going to go. I don't You're either. not going to go? No, I don't really care to go. You've got to be the, like, the most famous guy oh, from your class remotely close it's not yeah. I, we had a guy that got on american idol he's a human piece of garbage no one likes him his life has dwindled out wait do we know his name uh, yeah his name's casey casey what thrasher oh so i had a friend pass away mm-hmm. a while back a friend passed away and I, I wrote a post about it because it was one of the reasons i do comedy is this dude you know mm-hmm. and so i wrote this post and uh, you know i sent his mom a message and everything and i was like your son helped me so much in life and he was a great person. And uh, Casey sent me a message. He goes, hey, man, that's really good you posted that on social media. It makes your fans like it's like a serious side. It's really good for promotion. You should promote with it. Wow. And I was like, hey, man, my friend died. Please stop talking to me. He goes, oh, don't be a sourpuss about it. <laughs> and then I've tried to fight him at a church one time. <laughs> I saw him at a bar. I tried to fight him. He's an awful. Because I, I, I don't want to say stuff where he can technically sue me. But he's done very bad things mm-hmm. that everyone in my hometown knows mm-hmm. about. And he got on American Idol and, you know, got celebrated and then he died off, you know. And right. Now your right. boy is cruising by. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you were funny in high school? Yeah. What did you think when you were a kid in high school? What did you think your future career prospects had in store for you? I thought I was going to play sports professionally. What sport? Uh, basketball. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of never panned out. The big thing, honestly, I-, I wanted to be in like broadcasting, like something mm-hmm. on the news. Mm-hmm. And looking back, I used to film like little skits kind of at my high school. Yep. And one time I was telling my teacher, I was like, I want to film like a skit where like I tell jokes, not even realizing what I was saying. Right. Right. 
Dead serious. No, no I don't want to do stand up. I, yeah, I want to tell jokes I didn't in front even of understand. a crowd. Yeah. And I remember, like, <laughs> I used to go to school and repeat Cat Williams jokes. I bought Cat Williams live after I saw him a wild night. I bought it at a store. Mm-hmm. And it was mind boggling to me, like, how funny it was. And I would repeat the jokes. And Cat Williams actually got people knew him at my high school. Like, people knew the mm-hmm. jokes. And so it never was comedy ever. It wanted to be like something in broadcasting, like something on the news or like an ESPN reporter. And that's what I went to college for like a, two semesters for. You were just going because you thought you should go? Well, yeah. I wanted to transfer eventually to UA to do uh, broadcast journalism mm-hmm. is what they title it as. And I always wanted to make YouTube videos. I just never knew how to edit. And I never could afford a computer that edited it properly. But I did a couple things before I even started comedy. And so then I went to college for like a month or two. I was so bad at college. I didn't have Wi-Fi at my house. Mm-hmm. Like that's what's so funny. Like when you look back at it now, Wi-Fi is like everyone has it. I mean, there are poor people have Wi-Fi. And so I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I couldn't even do my homework. Right. And then I was working a job. So this is... Uh, I'm 17. All right. So 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. No Wi-Fi. That is the digital divide. That's a real thing. Poor people can't afford Wi-Fi. It was crazy. And so I would go to college, and it wasn't like I was doing bad. But then at the same time, I was working a full-time job. Mm-hmm. And Where? I was working at Henry's Burgers and Cream in my Ooh, hometown, yeah. which just recently got bought out. By the way, changed owners. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. I would work there, and I could work there five days a week now. And maybe Saturdays, too, you know. And so now I'm starting to make money. Right. And you're seeing money before you realize, like, bills, you know. I'm still, yeah. I'm still not paying real bills. And I was, I was like, I'm just going to do this. And I, I dropped out of college, like, maybe... Maybe two months in. Did you, with the money you were making at Henry's, were you putting gas in the car and buying... Gas in the car, beer. Food on the weekends? Yeah, that's what it was. And did your mom, did she have trouble making ends meet every month? Was it stable or was it crazy? She she let me live in our mobile home and she was living with her boyfriend. Mm. And so I kind of had the mobile home to myself. She was working at McKesson still, so she was making like enough money to get by on. My mm. grandfather wasn't really sick yet. So he was still kind of taking care of himself at the time, which is shocking. She was doing okay. And between her and Doug at the time, they were doing good enough where... Right. And I wasn't asking for money then. And I got a job at Mercedes where I was making like 12 an hour for a while. Doing what? Packaging parts. I worked at like the Mercedes sister plant. Okay. Which models do they make there? So we just package the parts that go onto every model. But I, surprisingly... I was the youngest person to ever be like a team leader there. I also was like six months away where I could transfer to the factory where I could make like 24 to 30 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And I quit then when they told me that because I was like, if I do that, I'm never going to do anything else. I started looking at cars, you know, and like Mercedes, you can like, if you work there, you can finance a car for like super cheap. Wow. I asked my mom, like, can I quit my job and just come live with y'all? And she said, yeah. And I did it with no plans or anything. I was like, I'm going to be a musician. That's pretty ballsy, man. It's stupid is what it is. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever... I could have kept the job. Yeah. I could have kept the job. I remember that day that someone told me that, and then I looked at, like, challengers. I wanted a challenger really right. bad. Right, yeah. And I was like, if I do this, I'm locked in. You'll be making 24 bucks an yep. hour, which is good money, but you got to pay that car note. If you can rent a house in Brookwood for, like, 500 bucks a month, like wow. a full house. Right. So, so I, would, I would be living large. And I, I yeah. knew friends that lived that life, but I watched their body declined they declined they started looking for like women with kids already they just wanted to go into that life Mm. and a lot of them seemed like really miserable with it some people love it some people are made for that you know some people their whole thing is to go out on the weekends with their kids and go do stuff which is i love it if that's what you want Mm -hmm. i never wanted that and i quit and i think i just got a tax return or my last check i had like the two weeks off filed those got my last check in doing music and then less than what a were you playing later. you were doing music what were you playing i used to write music i still write music mm-hmm. I, I love writing music and i couldn't play guitar at the time i was trying to learn and so i was writing music and a month after i quit very lucky my buddy um lefty had an open mic downtown mm-hmm. and he had told me and i didn't even realize i was like like comedy and he goes yeah and i was like well i'd love to come watch it and i went and watched it and then less than Two weeks later, I was on stage. That's downtown Birmingham? No, no. This was in Tuscaloosa. So that was at a green bar. Wow. There was like 10 people there. What attracted you to it? What was... I went and watched it, and people had like told me I was funny, which everyone says that, and I went and watched it, and I was like, I think I could do... Like, I'm better than these. I'm funnier than these people. <laughs> I think that every time ever, I watch ever, comedy. Yeah. Like, you watch it, and you're like, that was a joke. I'm better. No, no. I, <laughs> I swear to God, I literally watched them, because given they all were awful. They, right. They're awful to this day. And um, and I make sure I say that all the time because they've done nothing with their life. 
and right. I've blown past them. And yeah. they were super, super rude to me when I started. <laughs> but um, so I went and watched them, and I was like, they weren't good. And I was like, I could do that. And then well, like maybe two weeks later, I got on stage, and I did it. And it was rough to come up in either Birmingham or Tuscaloosa. I was never, no one ever supported. What like, was your first good joke? That was the first joke I ever wrote. I have a tough job. I'm a full-time stay-at-home son. That, oh yeah, I've heard that's a great that joke. joke. Now I've heard a couple people do like that joke, but they didn't steal or anything. It just it was a common thought. But yeah, for that to be your first joke ever is actually like that's, a really a good really joke. good joke. It's a smart joke. You know that joke was on Comedy Central. You know three years later mm-hmm. after I did it. So very proud of that. How does that happen three years later? Where do you go from downtown Tuscaloosa open mic? So the one thing I'm always proud of, there's two things. I don't have relationships in comedy. Some people are really, really close with people in comedy. Yeah. I'm not really close with anyone. Everyone knows me and I know them. Yeah. But I don't have these relationships because I never stayed anywhere long. Like David Perdue always goes, are you living in Atlanta again? Because I see you here two weeks in a row, but now you're gone. Senator David Perdue, who's <laughs> running for governor now. <laughs> Wait, is there a different one? No, David, David Perdue is a very funny, smart comedian in Atlanta. David Perdue is also the former senator of Georgia, That's who hilarious. is now running for the Republican primary for governor. If you told me David, the David we know, the yeah. comedian, I would be like, oh, yeah, I get it. I mean, but I he's running for governor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's got that. He's got charisma. He's got charm. But I never stayed anywhere. The reason I was able to, I guess, progress quickly was I always, I leveraged everything. I sold my truck. I, you know, lived on nothing and I always bounced around and I got more stage time, better stage time than a lot of people did. That's why road comics are like always really good. They get tacky when they go on the road too long. Right. But if you can bounce around, man, and you can make that. Because when you're in downtown Atlanta and you're telling a joke where you don't like Trump or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, no one likes him down there. Mm-hmm. So then everyone's going to, oh, it's so funny. It's not a yep. good joke. Take it to Des Moines, Iowa, right. where people love him. That's mm-hmm. the one thing where I was welcomed by the black crowds here so early on. The hipster rooms would never let me go on stage. Right. I learned how to do comedy in front of black people, which is such a skill because you have to learn how to, like, to get to the joke so much faster. So you have to yep. have multiple jokes. Yep. You have to earn it in front of a black yeah, crowd. Yeah, especially if you're not just like, I'm a white, and I can't dance. <laughs> like that kind of right, stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. So then you do that, but then you also did Laugh the Skull in front of like, you know, you go in front of like these hipster people that maybe don't like you because you're Southern. That happens a lot. And then you make that work and you just bounce around. Well, I think people also, when they hear your Southern accent, they're like, oh, this guy's going to be a blue collar comedian. And all due respect to the massive success of that success. brand, The reputation from a comedy standpoint is that it's right down the middle and not terribly nuanced from a joke writing perspective. Yeah, which is dumb for specifically with Jeff Foxworthy. To me, he's one of the greatest comics that's ever lived. The way the structure of the way he would write jokes was beautiful. And even Larry, I mean, I'm not a fan of Larry, but Larry has a a beautiful way of like the guy's written five hours. I mean, that's impressive. You're bouncing around. And how old are you? 20? 21? At the time I was 20 when I was bouncing. Because I remember I couldn't go to uh, one of the open mics here in Atlanta when I first moved here. And how do you get booked? And how much money are you making at this time? Because you're just living out. Are you living out of your car? No, no. I moved here, met a guy off Craigslist, looked for a room. He Craig? Was, you met Craig? Yeah. He's a lot better than the guy I met. I don't even know the guy's real name. Because the guy <laughs> but the guy got mailed to his house that was like different names and stuff. Right. He was a weird guy, so I'd slept on his couch 40 bucks a week. He would stare at me. I'd wake up. He'd be sitting at the couch, like, staring at me. And he was real odd and, you know, moved from there. I bounced around a couple places. I got a job here, like, within a week of being here. Yeah. Shep Slater. Kind of, like, does comedy with, like, the... He doesn't really do it anymore, but he used to. And he let me uh, work, like... I've literally worked, like, two houses down from here before. By the way, we're recording this sitting in my basement. Rocky's sitting in the very seat where Muhammad Masakwai sat a couple of uh, two smart people. months ago. Just two people that are millionaires, and we love our life. <laughs> Mo's a great dude. No, you know he is? No He's idea. a former Georgia wide receiver, played for the Cleveland Browns. Anyway. Oh, I should know. You would know if you listened to the podcast. But anyway... Because you had never had a ton of money, did not making money, did not having a secure paycheck disturb you? Because I think that's one of the hardest things for any wannabe creative person to get used to is, I don't have financial security. No, not at that stage. I remember like my mom used to would wire me like 20 bucks through Walmart. This was right. before Venmo. Yeah. And so not having money then really was never the thing that held me down. That never bothered me. Money bothered me after I had made money, then lost it. So, like when I how'd you make money and lose it? uh, I went on tour with Ralphie May, and I went on tour with Ralphie, and I was making great money. And then Ralphie, so you were opening for Ralphie, yeah, I was opening theaters, theaters, yeah, I was making you know five hundred, seven hundred bucks a show, multiple shows a night, great. 
Staying on the bus, not having to stay. Staying stay in his house in Nashville. He'll yeah. stay with him. I have no bills whatsoever. And so everything's going good. Then Darren, there's a comic who's a Facebook uh, comedian, Darren Knight. I got him into stand-up, essentially, like like doing big theaters. And I went on the road with him, and I was making money for him. And they are paying for my flights from New York. Mm-hmm. I had moved to New York at the time. And so, and, and have it, you got a manager at this point? Yeah, I was with a, a guy at Levity. He didn't do anything. He hurt me more than he helped me. But everything's going good, and I'm making this money every weekend. Then Darren, his manager, always hated me. Ralphie's manager. No, 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 no. Ralphie's manager, I had never talked to. Darren's manager. I had started touring with Darren because me and Ralphie had gotten into an argument about something. He was going through a lot in his life, and we later both talked about it. But he kind of lashed out one time. I was young, didn't mm-hmm. respond well to it. Mm-hmm. I lashed back out, and we were in an argument. So I went and toured Darren. And I'm on these, doing these big places, and I'd asked for a raise because, you know, there's some nights Darren would make, you know, 60 grand and I would make 500. <laughs> and so I'm doing 30 minutes. He's doing 30 minutes. So I'm just, I asked for a thousand. I was like, it's over 2,000 seats. Welcome to comedy. And that's why now I always pay my openers more than they would make anywhere else. So Darren, his manager goes, yeah, we'll talk about it. Four days before our six month tour, I have every weekend book with them. They say, we're not going to raise your money and we're going to lower it, actually. What? We're going to take away your travel pay down to like 300 per That was just flights. because you asked for a raise. Yeah, that, he was trying to get me off the tour. I would tell Darren, like, hey, this guy's stealing money from you, which the guy is. Right, the manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I went from that to not working for six months. And also, after the six months, it wasn't like I'm going back. I lost that. So I'm going right. back to regular featuring where I'm making 600 bucks a week and I'm paying for all my travel. So I fell into <laughs> the biggest financial debt it's, of my life. And that's what's... You sucks. know, 2020 was the most profitable year I've had in comedy. Because in comedy, the more I work, the more money I lose. <laughs> because, <laughs> it's like, so it's, it's 2020, I didn't travel anywhere. I didn't... How you losing money? Is it drugs? No, it's comedy. <laughs> These it's like, hey, you're gonna make weekend. you're gonna make three hundred bucks for the weekend, and you're gonna spend six hundred to get there and stay for the weekend. That was the problem: was having money, seeing what life can be, giving my mom money, and then going back in with that, and now coming into that with credit card debt. Yeah, and that was when things got. Did brutal. you run up those bills when you were making money? Well, yeah, because Darren didn't tell me that we weren't going to work December or January. I just thought, like you know, usually they give me the dates and we'd go. Right. And so I didn't work December, or January, and I was like, oh, it's fine. I got these credit cards here, and yep. I just use my credit cards. Yep. And then, you know, you find out that you're not – I didn't work for like two months after that. Shout out to Marcy at the Punchline. Yeah. The only reason I had money to eat on. Dude, when I filmed my Epic special here, I was so poor, I forgot to eat at the diner earlier. And so I – Next to the Punchline. Next to the Punchline. Yeah. So I forgot to eat. So I went to – I had to walk to Waffle House. I couldn't afford an Uber, but I had like $10 in my account. And uh, I walked down to the Waffle House, placed my order, and I swiped the card. It didn't go through. Because uh, I think like my gym bill from Planet Fitness had just hit, and it was like ten dollars, <laughs> and I couldn't have the food. Yeah, and I had to walk back home. Yeah, I remember being like twenty three, twenty four, and having like you know twenty five dollars in my bank account, and then bouncing a twenty seven dollar check, and then they charge you whatever twenty five dollars per per time they deposit yep. it, and all of a sudden you're like. But I had twenty five dollars. I, I hate when they re up. I hate when yeah. they go back and try to get it again. Now don't re deposit they, they, the check. They hit it twice, and then you're like, "No, just give me one more day, dude." Right after COVID, when I paid off all my stuff, man, dude, it, I looked back. I paid over a thousand dollars in late fees in on my fees, credit card. Right, it's expensive to be poor. Yeah, and now because you're paying your interest rate is you know whatever eighteen twenty three percent depending, and then you pay all these fees that people that have a balance don't have to pay and as a percentage of your income and your net worth it's just criminal but you know that's that's the way the banking system works until it doesn't okay so you're super broke how do things start to come back and you know here we are what you're like five years later now kind of four years later it was 2017 when everything happened once things started going in the right direction. No, no, no. When things started going in the right direction was last year in December. Right. Like a week after I was That's the weekend. Right. That's when. Th- see? I think it when was, you work with Paul Ollinger, yeah. careers take off. I think it was literally the week. I think it was that week I went viral the next day. Because How, I think it was happened? the week after. I posted the Kevin Hart clip from Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. I put it on uh, TikTok because my nephew had wanted me to re-download TikTok to make this thing. And I had been blocked off there prior. Right. Or just like violations and stuff. So I re-downloaded it, put the clip up, saw the clip got likes with no followers, which mm-hmm. means I wasn't blocked anymore. Essentially, when you're blocked, it doesn't show to anyone that doesn't follow you. I had let my TikTok go before when it had, I think, 50,000 followers. And then it swapped 
So I started putting up clips, and on my way to the Chattanooga Comedy Catch, thirty, I think thirty-one tickets sold. I posted that clip, and that clip got in total, I think it's ten million views, one point six million likes. Wow! And it blew up my Instagram, which then started going crazy because I had no one, not many people know this. Last year in September, I sold some things, took some things I had, took a couple backyard shows and stuff, sold mm-hmm. some merch, and I saved up enough money to hire a social media team. And I hired this team, and they they didn't do anything special, like nothing crazy about it. All they do is just put graphics on your videos, mm-hmm. post them at correct times. I thought they had some kind of like secret sauce, but they, they didn't. And they post them consistently, but we had no growth when it happened. Yeah. But because I had this back catalog when my Instagram started to blow up, I had this whole catalog of all these clips. And then I had two clips in particular that just, they both went viral on their own. I think like three or four million views apiece. And then The Rock followed me. Then I got drunk and said, thank you to The Rock. He shared the video. That blew up my page, <laughs> like 10,000 in a night. Wow. And then I had another clip go viral. And that one got, it was a Clevin Hart clip, but this time on Instagram. And that got 12 million views, I think. So now you're working very consistently. You're making good money. Every weekend, yeah. How's it feel? It feels unbelievable. I mean, I burned through money, too. Uh, I have, Why aren't you saving money? I'm not, I'll never save money. Why not? Money comes and goes. You got to get rid of it. Don't ever keep money. That's my advice for everyone listening to this podcast. Get rid of your money when it comes oh, in because it no, comes back in. No, this is waves. Mike Carano. No, my, that's get not. Rid of no, it. get rid no, of it. No, no. Take care of everyone you possibly can. Take care of you. I'm fine. Put your mask on first. Put your financial mask on You never know how long it's going to last, so spend it all while you got it. That's how I go about <laughs> oh, things. Rocky. I bought an $800 bottle of bourbon yesterday. Get the hell out of here. And I cannot wait to drink that shit, too. Well, I, I would be excited about I bought my about opener, a Nintendo Switch, one of the new uh-huh. ones, for yeah. his birthday. You did? Yeah. I always tip him well. I take care of, I tip 100 bucks at pretty much every restaurant I go to now. Yeah. And, and if they address it and they're like, you don't have to do that, I give them another 100. Rocky, please stop. Please stop. Please take care of you. Get it out of here. Your, no. Because you put it out and it comes back in. No, Every time I do no, something for somebody, no, I'm almost selfish because no. it comes back in and wait. Well, right. But that's not... You've seen what happens when the flow stops and you don't know what's out there. No. You know, you're a more mature person than you were four or five years ago. I have a, I have a Twitch ago. channel. You have a Twitch channel. I have a Twitch channel. Which and means what? I'm going to be rich. <laughs> so it means your people are watching you your videos on Twitch? Yeah. Yeah. We got, we're, actually, we're actually already affiliate. I've already made money from that. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude. I'm getting rid of it. And I got a bunch of stuff coming up that's going to do real well. And even if it doesn't do well, I still get paid from it. Also, shout out to Man of Sleep Mask. They gave me some money. They gave me the money to afford that bottle of bourbon. Yeah. And they're great. But nah, dude, I'm living life. You get rid of money and it comes back to you. Love's more important you, than money. I, well, I agree with you completely. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> you need to have a certain amount of money. Let's talk about your teeth. Oh, baby. What look at think? those pretty teeth. They look good. They, they the do. The bottom look good. are still real, and I'm never. I'm never going to get these capped. These don't need to be capped. They're just crooked. I'm actually doing them. Veneers. No, no, no. You can get those the Invisaligns or whatever they're called. Yeah, I might get the Invisalign. I'm doing that right now because these got all squirrely on me, and yep. my kids, Elvis, said, uh, "What's up with your dead tooth?" Because it was gray, and I was like, "I'm too young you to have a dead tooth." Too, you got to swing on at fifty two. <laughs> Elvis, swing. go to your room. Okay, right but now. no. Listen, the teeth story is a great example as to why you need to have money in the bank. Talk about your teeth. Did you ever go to the dentist as a kid? Uh, yeah, I went to the dentist all the time. I have naturally, my teeth were going to fail no matter what I did. I talked to a dentist. He goes, they had to pull stuff out of the, they gave me a sinus lift. I had to like do stuff in my mouth to make my teeth fit. My teeth were going to fall out. My mom had dentures by, what, 25? My dad had them by 17. My teeth were never going to make it. I come what, from a white trash. Because of what? The, the, it's genetic. Your teeth are genetics. Okay. Your all teeth right. are pretty much all genetic. Okay, fine. But you were in a situation, what, a year ago? Dude, I've been in a situation for five when we years. Were, when I opened for you December of 2020, yeah, we were back at it. It was December November of 2020. 2020. No, because I drove home and we flew out for our holiday trip. No, because I would have had my teeth by then. Okay, so you had, oh, maybe so. I got my teeth done maybe the first so. week of December. I, le- I left from Chattanooga. What did you need to, to have done? Oh, uh, okay. So, you, had, you had a major dental issue. Multiple bone grafts, sinus lift, 10 crowns, uh, four implants, three extractions, three root canals. And what was the estimate to get it done in America? In the United 34 States. 34 grand. Of America. But they actually, they didn't even see all the stuff they needed to do. So they right. 40 grand. What was your solution to that? Go to Mexico. You went to Mexico. And- Best place ever for dental work. And I went down there and they charged me uh, 11000 total. And they Where did. in Mexico? Los Agadones. Where is that? It's right across from Yuma, Arizona. Okay. So you had a bill, a medical bill. Yeah. Even going to Mexico was still eleven grand. 
Yeah. She'll have to come up with 11 grand. No, I didn't come up with it. My mom took out a loan against her 401k Oh, last for year. fuck's sake, dude. You're and killing, then, you're and, killing and then, me. And, then, and you're tipping $100 and at restaurants, this past Rocky? Year, I paid. I paid it all back to her. Well, God bless you for that. But, bro, I mean, like... You got to put it out. You got to put it out. You, we, uh, this is crazy money, and you do crazy stuff with your money. That's the moral of this podcast. <laughs> I swear to By God. By the way, I pitched you an idea a long time ago, and it worked. What was that? It was the Andrew Schultz idea. I pitched you that a long time ago. You remember that? The idea of putting stuff on social media oh, and doing it a certain way? And I probably told you don't do it. Yep. No, no, no. I remember you told me you needed to buy, you needed like 10 grand to build out a podcast studio yes, in Las Vegas where you were working at the time. And I was like, you don't need ten grand. Yeah. This thing is you need, That's true. You need two, you two grand. Don't. You can start a podcast like a high end. I think podcast. at the time I was pitching that though was also for the special though too. Uh, I think you were just talking about a podcast studio. No, nah, because the time I was in the podcast in Vegas, that's when I was doing the album. Which doing the album was one of the best things I ever did. Okay, that was so smart because I got money from that. All I'm saying, Rocky, is that you don't know what's going to happen. Like the pandemic happens, all this flow of money that you're getting based on, you know. Uh, working in the weekends yeah. that stops no, well that's the biggest thing i've learned i'm trying to make my working on the weekend my least profitable thing i'm doing good so now it's brand deals okay uh my checks from sirius xm mm -hmm. which those and i'm putting some more so stuff you're getting license sirius xm plays your album yep. tracks yep. and you get the performer are you also the rights holder you bet your ass i am good that's very I had a smart. guy a long yep. time ago a friend mm -hmm. of mine invested to do it paid him right. back on it and but i now get to own it Instead okay good very, that's fantastic Wait, what about 51%? Because you know, you lose 51% when you do it with someone. Right, that's what I'm like saying. A, yeah. No, you lose more than Stupid. that. The yeah. rights holder gets like all the money. That's I got a check the other day for like, I don't know, $50 for one month. I've got one track on Sirius. Yeah, they picked and, up all mine. And <laughs> you're, for the record, you are far more successful than No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm that's not saying why it either. it's profitable. No, 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 that's great. It's fantastic. I, I no, it's, recorded it If you it twice. did own the rights to that, you'd be getting 15% of that. But whatever, but you do, that's smart. And for the record... Since you said that somebody else invested in you and implied that I did not, I have invested in you in the you past. Have. Yeah. <laughs> and but you and missed you the Andrew Schultz back. idea, and though. you paid me That's back. That's the one you I told did. me. There is I no ROI I probably told you TikTok is a waste of time. And then three <laughs> months ago. And then ago, when he did it, I was like, oh! <laughs> three months ago, I limped onto TikTok and clawed my way to 2,200 followers. You would do great followers. on TikTok. I'm working on it. I need your advice. All and right. I will gladly you get to you. You have a show in one hour, okay? We so we're going to spend about 15 more minutes talking, and then I got to let you go so that Marcy at the Punchline doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> Now, this whole thing about you putting money out there, you said earlier you have no interest in having a family. Do you ever want to have a family? Do you want to get married? I don't know. Probably not. No? I have a girlfriend now. We've dated four years. She wants to get married. She wants to have kids. We were having real conversations about that. I feel like I'm too selfish, and I love what I do now too much. You know, because yep. I thought once, you know, now, so there's no debt, right? I have no debt. That's and, great. That's fantastic. And that's great. So I'm like, I thought now would be the time I'm like, sit back and chill. But now I just work four times harder than I did before. And now it's like, now I'm trying to build these things. And Are I you having so fun? Much. I have the best time ever. My life, I don't have bad days anymore. And that's why, you know, the money thing is huge because it's like you don't have to worry and you get artistic expression. But now I know I'm like, okay, because I'm doing this, I'm going to, the reason I do stuff, or I guess I have like this arrogance about money now is because I, I can look at what I'm doing and like, you know, like I said, brand deals, serious XM checks, Facebook checks. And now I figured out the Facebook algorithm on how to make money off that. And that's become very, very profitable. Good. And so learning like other ways to do things now, like almost like that's what drives me to like want to do more stuff and, and want to be smarter. I have a huge following. I need to use it. I need to you know get everything out of I it. I think you're doing great. I think you're you're, you're doing good. really hustling. I think you could be doing better. Like and I think better. you will be. I think you will be because you got a lot of drive. You're smart. You're putting a lot of good stuff out there. Your comedy is fantastic. I think you have always said that. You've, I think you've been very good about that. You got me to laughing skull a long time ago. I did. Yeah. You remember you walked up to Marshall when I was standing there. Marshall didn't know I was and you is complimented that right? me and you were one of the key reasons. That's why oh, I've always dude. loved you. Well, I'm happy I did that. I was smart. I wish I would have known about the Andrew Sullivan thing, but not Andrew Sullivan, the uh, I mean, Andrew I Schultz. You anyway, Andrew, no, Sullivan? Andrew Sullivan is another guy that was on the podcast that you don't know about because you don't listen to the podcast. He's also very smart, but he's not a nuclear physicist. Listen to crazy money. Get rid of listen your money. Listen to when crazy money. In. No, don't get rid of your money. Here's what I want to pitch to you. Okay. What if somehow we take, say, 15% of everything that comes in okay. that you never even see it? 
Right. And we just like, let's pretend it doesn't even exist. Right. And you let, not me, but somebody else put it someplace to where you don't have to think about it and it just, well, I do it just that. happens. I do that. You have savings? Yeah. I, I thought you said you just gave all your money away. No, I make a lot of money. Dude. And are you saving money? How much I, money are you like percentage wise? How much money are you saving? Well, I, I, I have enough right now set aside for what I think my taxes are going to be. So I have, then that's the that's very. <laughs> then on April on April sixteenth, you have no more money. No, no. But then I have. I mean, I'll say set aside. I have and bleep this out if you can. Can you bleep this? I'll, I'll tell you the exact amount. I'm not. Well, I don't want to get... say how much money I have when they can blatantly just hear me. That's <laughs> I don't want to freaking tell everybody. <laughs> Do you have enough money to cover your next if, big if emergency? I, if I went out of work for six months, I could cover everything. Okay, that's yeah. a good. That's good. That's one of the most people. I'm trying to spend that money. I just can't find out ways why to spend it. Why? No one will sell me the bottle of Pappy I want. It's sitting there. Look, you put every dollar you can back into your business, and you put dollar into quality I, of I, life. I agree with you. You know what's a shitty quality of life? Oh, I know. Being broke, yeah. and not and having to borrow money from your mom to get your teeth fixed. But have you paid off your mom's debt? I'm pitching. I'm working with a brand right now, and we're going to do a whole video where I'm going to give her 50 grand in cash. But uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to get the brand to cover it all. Yeah. And so I have a fun way of we're going to do it. It's going to be very emotional, and mm -hmm. I'm going to give her 50 grand cash. I don't know how much her debt is because she won't tell me. It can't be more than 50 grand because the house is paid off, the cars are paid off. Why am I going to put out my money when I can get a brand? Sure. I'd love to be in front of millions of people. Dude. And they cover it. This is great. This yeah. is great. All right. Let's promote a couple of your brand partners. You got your own line of cigars now. Got my own line of cigars through Provada. They are absolutely incredible cigars grown in the Dominican, have a Mexican filler inside of them. They're awesome. Provada is one of the best cigar distributors. They're in this whole club. It's incredible. So go get the Rocky Dale Davis cigar from Provada. And then I also am working right now with Manta Sleep. If you do use promo code Rocky, you get 10% off Manta Sleep, M-A-N-T-A. Manta sleep. Manta sleep. Okay. And uh, their complete blackout sleep mask and sleep is the oh, most cool. important thing for happiness, workflow, everything. And what's the code again? Rocky. Rocky. Rocky Capital as you get 10% off. And they also think they have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. But you will like it. I've used them for three years. And then also these shirts right here. These are Robert Barquett. And uh, we don't have a promo code for them yet. But these are very, very nice T-shirts. They don't shrink in the wash. Great quality T-shirts. Fit your body perfectly no matter what your body type. So you can go to their website. And we don't have a promo code yet, but we should soon. I think probably for 10 maybe 15% off. Where's Rocky Dell Davis in one year and in five years? One year, uh, I'm going to be living in Nashville. Okay. Uh, I will have a million subscribers on YouTube and three theater shows a weekend. Okay. Rocky will have one year from today, one million subscribers on YouTube. That'll be the hardest one. A shot of tequila with The Rock. That'll be really easy. That'll be fun. I'll have 100,000 followers on Twitch. So if you're on Twitch or your kids too, or nieces be... and nephews are on Twitch, that's great. I'll take my nieces and nephews to Disney World. That's are you one. saving for that now? No. Because that's saying. five to ten grand at least. So I'll go tomorrow. Like what? Well, I'm just saying, great. I'm just saying that's just blow the money. I'll, okay. I'll spend 20. We'll my mom we'll will be able to quit her jobs. House. Okay. And then what is she going to do? How old's your mom? 65. Okay. Right. I'll do a sold out theater show. Oh, bro, you got that for sure. Those are well, the, the toughest ones, the YouTube and the Twitch. The rest of them right. are pretty easy. Right. Amy Schumer told me not to let my mom quit her job. Why'd she say that? I don't know. She just said it. You need something to do every day. She can. She can do like stained glasses. My mom had a bunch of dreams that she wasn't able to do because of me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to make sure she does them all. But she No, did. your mom could do it because of her. You didn't choose no, to I, get. No, I came in the womb. You know, that's my yeah. fault. The thing that reason she won't even quit right now is because uh, insurance or something. Oh, I right. think if she works yeah, like three yeah. more years and she's got everything. Do you have health insurance? No, but I'm looking at it. I'm trying You're to looking out. at it. I don't, I don't know what to I ask a guy like what to do, like how to get it. All good. You want to go on healthcare.gov right now? Right now? They, they just sent me an email the other day. Is that real? Yes, it's real. I get like insurance stuff in my email all the time. Healthcare.gov just came on. That's Please. Obamacare, and that's me. But I don't need that. I want the good stuff, dude. I'm making money. I want to, I want to get like something. I want to, well, I want, problem, I want to the, pay 10 grand a month in insurance. I want the best. I want to walk into a doctor and just give me an IV when I'm drunk. You want the, you want the <laughs> bling insurance? Yeah. You don't know how much I spend on insurance per month, dude. Get your weight up. Let's play big bank. Take no. You bank. need first of all, you need health insurance because you've already learned. I do not. That no, I do not want that, dental. That unforeseen health expenses can cost you tens of thousands of dollars after yeah. taxes. Yeah, and so you can get a high deductible plan on healthcare.gov. Or that's the way to go. The problem is your mom can't quit her job because you can't get insurance as an individual the same way you can get it as a part of a group like at a, at a job. Yeah, she'll keep insurance if she has like three more years. Like they, they, they well, she, if yeah. she can retire as part yeah, of retire, yeah. okay, then you don't want her to quit without that insurance, dude. 
And you need to get some insurance too because you could, get you, could, you, dude, you could get a car wreck. It'll cost you a hundred grand to fix your legs. Yeah. I mean, well, don't, first off, knock on freaking wood. Dude. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to conjure it um, up out of the ether, dude. No, you're going to hire someone to do it. <laughs> no, uh, now I'm getting it. I'm just trying to figure it out because I would like when I, because a lot of times working the road, shaking hands with everybody, hugging, yeah. I just get like sick and I'm like, if I could just shove a needle in my ass and take the Z pack, I'd be mm-hmm. fine. But, right. all, but like, that's the biggest thing. But you got to go see do. a doctor to do that. Yeah. Well, that's what, like, even now, I know it's just so much cheaper if you just have insurance, like $25 deductible and then whatever the shot costs or whatever, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then also, I think I would like to just honestly just, you know, go in and get a checkup. I haven't been to the doctor in. 10 years probably <sighs> so i just go get stuff checked on but that's that was after but i had to i had to make sure i bought that i want to get that bottle of george t stag first before i did that stuff <laughs> <laughs> no health insurance but an 800 dollar of bourbon dude it's, it's it's a good price i can sell it right now for 14 where hours. are you gonna is it in vegas at your house no it's at my, house, at my car right now oh it's in your car right yeah now. <laughs> i almost dropped it at waffle house i got drunk at waffle house i almost dropped the whole damn bottle and oh, broke it God, rocky i'm so glad i'm not 28 anymore but i'm happy for your success all right, where's Rocky in five years? Whose career do you want to emulate, and where are you going to be in five? Ron years? White, Ron, Ron White. White. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the that's the emulation. Everything he's done, not as not as mm-hmm. personal life. I'm, I'm not going to get married seventeen times, but <laughs> <laughs> what he's done is he's built people. A lot of people you see, you know, in this industry, they come, they burn out. They don't really build fans. They build brand. They don't have people that know them though. Like they like they we like this person because of this. And that stuff dies out. Ron White's toured for what twenty five years. Oh, sells shoot, out. man, he's been on the road for thirty five at least. He's sixty two now. I want, that. I want I to die in a hotel room one day. That's what I want. I just uh-huh. want. I want to do this for the rest of my life. I want to live everything. I want to eventually. I'd like to see the point where I can tip a Waffle House person a thousand every time, mm-hmm. everywhere, every place I go, thousand bucks to the you know Waffle House person. I want to make sure my nieces and nephews are all taken care of. They can you know have a Bentley when they're you know sixteen. I want to just make them live a wild life. And I want to have a little bitty farm in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And that's just live my life. And go tour the road. Tour bus. No jet. Jet's stupid. Tour bus. No, but I don't even want to buy a tour bus because the turnover on those is not great. You can never really resell them. Maybe rent one, though. That's my mm-hmm. my goal. All right. Rocky Dale Davis. We'll put some of your clips. We'll put links to your clips. Cool, there. guys. Shout out to Paul Ollinger. Crazy money. If you got money, spend it. Never hold it. What's your website? Rocky Dell Davis. You can go to Rocky Dell Davis. And uh, it's Rocky Dell Davis on everything. We have a website, but Wix is being stupid right now. So we're battling trying to get my name from them, but they won't give it. So I don't know what the exact name is going to be. But just go on my Instagram. It has all my stuff, all my ticket links. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. I love you, man. I really Thanks, do. buddy. Love you too, man. There you go, Rocky Dell Davis. Links to his website and Instagram are in the show notes. By all means, follow him. Look for his show dates. He's traveling all over the country. So uh, find out when he's coming to a city near you and go see him. And after the show, go up to him and tell him that you heard about him on my podcast. And maybe he'll listen to an episode. No, no, he won't. He won't do it. All right. Takeaways. There's only one. And that is don't follow Rocky's advice. Don't get rid of your money as soon as it comes in. That's a terrible idea. Put your money in the bank. Save it for a rainy day and for retirement and for your kids' education and Plan on having kids even if you don't ever want to have them because you might. And if you do have them, you're going to want that money. Also, because as we even discussed, you don't know what's going to happen next year. As we record this, the Omicron variant is tearing across the United States like a a virulent strain of, I don't even have to say like a virus because that's what it is. And we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of months with comedy or with whatever business you're in. So, By all means, protect yourself, and the way you protect yourself is by saving your money for a rainy day or a particularly virus-strewn day. That doesn't have the same ring to it. Anyway, folks, it's been a pleasure sharing this year with you. This will be our last episode of the year. I've got lots of great stuff in the can for January 2022. Have a happy and healthy holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, take the opportunity to be good to yourself, hug your family, and be grateful for all the gifts you've been given in life. Let's start this new year on a healthy and happy note together. In the meantime, Mike Carano, make me sound smart. When I was growing up, I used to live in a trailer. Like most of my life, I was very poor. I grew up in a crappy trailer park in a single wide trailer, you know? But then now, like, you know, I go on Facebook and everybody's talking about how cute tiny houses are. I'm like, that's a trailer in a dress. That's what that is right there. (laughs) Have y'all seen tiny houses? Have you seen trailers? Tomato, tomato, the same thing. (laughs) 
I love when people defend them too. They're like, no, Rocky, because you can get two tiny houses and put them together and make a big tiny house. I'm like, you mean a trailer? Like a single, a double wide trailer? Like what? You get two, uh, that's a double wide. Yeah, that's what we got those. No, 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 Rocky, because you can like a bunch of tiny houses with your friends, put them out in the woods and make a little tiny house village. I'm like a trailer park. Yeah, that's, that's what that is. <laughs> it's why I don't want crime. I don't like it, you know? And they're so expensive, $40,000. 40, dude, you're buying an eight, by, you're buying a Yao Ming size house for 40,000. You could buy my trailer park with the people for $40,000. Take the meth, sell it for 20, you're turning a profit. And you got a show on HGTV, blue jeans and methamphetamines. Like, that's great. 